up guys welcome back to the channel my name is John with Embers Ball Pythons and in today's episode we're looking at breeding maturity so we're gonna look at what is the recommended age weight size condition of our ball pythons before we can start pairing our males and our females together to hopefully expect the most healthiest and efficient ball python clutches for our collection um, so we're gonna look at a few different examples of males and females in our collection and kind of give you the rundown on what to look for in yours. All right, so let's dive right in. All right, so we're gonna look at both males and female ball pythons in our examples. Uh, but we're gonna start off with the males and to kind of keep things organized, we're gonna look at three different elements. First is the age. Uh, then it's going to be the weight and body condition of your ball python. And finally, the personal maturity of that ball python. Uh, those three elements, I think, are key when determining if your ball python is ready to get paired or start breeding. So we're going to kind of break that down with the examples that we show. Uh, so first up, I have Sonny. He's our bamboo ultra male. Uh, he's the father to most of our clutches this last season, which was our first. But he just... He did amazing, he's awesome. So kind of give you an example of those three elements, right? So let's look at his age. Sonny was born in 2019, and so he is two years old now, but he started pairing for us last season, meaning we started breeding him when he was one. And that's kind of like the recommended age for male ball pythons. It's at least one year old, and that kind of gives them that time to uh, reach that maturity level and that size and that weight and condition that we're going to discuss here shortly. Uh, but when it comes to age, at least one year old for males uh, should be that, that magic number. Uh, when it comes to weight and condition, right, looking at Sonny here, we're going to go ahead and weigh him out, see where he's at, because he's also doing some breeding for us this season. All right, so we've got our trusty little scale here. All right, he is at 1,261, so 1,260 grams. Um, that's way more than enough. He is in excellent shape and condition. The recommended weight for male ball pythons is really anywhere from 600 to around 800 grams. Uh, and again, in a year's time, they definitely should be able to reach that, that kind of weight if they're eating healthy and they're doing good for you. Um, I know that there's ball pythons uh, breeders out there that have even bred males that are under the 600 gram mark, closer to 400, 500 grams. Uh, but again, that also depends on that third point, their personal maturity level. So it, it, can, it all kind of falls down to uh, the personal maturity and growth and health of your ball python. Uh, so for Sonny, he started breeding last year for us, right? So he was about 800 grams. And that's kind of like that perfect mark for us. We like to kind of reach that 700, 800 gram marker before we start breeding. They just seem to kind of uh, kind of kick off better for us, if you know what I mean. When it comes to body condition, uh, see if we can get a little close up on him. You can see that he is looking good. He is not skinny. He's not flabby. He's not overweight. He has got some lean mass and muscle to him. He's a lean, mean fighting machine. So that's kind of the condition that you're looking for for your males. It's nothing too skinny where you see too much of a ridge and you definitely don't want them to be overweight and overfed uh, where they're, they're getting a lot of fat. Uh, they're getting a lot of fat storage inside their system where it's gonna slow them down. And they say that, that having that extra fat on them can kind of slow them down and go against what you're trying to accomplish and getting them to breed. Uh, so you kind of want to have that balanced out. Right, so we, we've gone to feeding our males um, once, uh, once every two weeks now, and they're not getting anything bigger than a small, even either a weaned or a small rat every two weeks, and they're doing amazing. They're, they're loving it. They're looking good. They're active. They're breeding for us or pairing for us without any issues. So that's really cool to see. All right, so just like another comparison, uh, looking at one of our smaller males, he was one of our first breeders last season as well. This is Link. He's a pastel Enchi Calabash reduction gene, 100% uh, head pied male. So he actually gave us our first clutch. He was paired to Bambi, our female bamboo, possible head VPI, and came out with a beautiful bamboo clutch, even hit some world's first combination with the KRG bamboo. It was pretty awesome. So he did great. Uh, for his age, as a reference, he is also two years old. He was born in 2019, so he started breeding for us at one, years old, at one year old, 
and he was weighing about 700, I want to say 600 to 700 grams when I started to pair him. Uh, so now, let's see where he's at. Again, he's looking awesome. Um, he's going to be a backup now for us this season coming up. So may or may not have to use him for our breeding season. He's looking at 890 grams. And that's perfect. That's kind of the condition we want to keep him at. He, uh, he's looking really good. His condition-wise, he's good. He's not too skinny, not too, not too fat or heavy. Right, he's got good muscle mass, looking lean, staying active, and just a beautiful, beautiful snake. So definitely would be perfect to, to use him in the breeding season if I had to. All right, next up for another reference example, I'm gonna give you guys a younger ball python. So this is Stitch. He is a pinstripe clown, 100% head ultra male, uh, male ball python. And he's younger than the other two. So he was born in 2020, all right, just last year, and he's only one year old, all right? So this is gonna be his first time breeding, his first season, uh, but he's doing great. He's been eating awesome, he's growing strong, he's got some lean muscle mass to him. Condition-wise, it's looking perfect, um, and really, that's what you're looking for. So I'm gonna weigh him so you guys can see that he has reached that maturity, uh, checkpoint for the weight and body condition we're looking at 936 grams right so you can see that he's matured pretty well for his age and he's already been locking up with all of our females that he's been breeding to so it's been it's been awesome he's been really doing really well for us this year which we're super excited because our goal is for him to be the all-star for this upcoming season I'm going to talk all about that in a future video coming up shortly about our season two premiere, but we're going to definitely be using him a lot going into the future. So really excited that he is taking off really well. All right. So that's Stitch. Once again, Pinstripe Clown, 100% Het Ultra Male. Really awesome. All right, buddy. Good job. All right, guys, so the last male I want to show off is Merlin. He is a Enchi triple head ultra male clown pied male. And this is a good reference or an example for that third point or that third element that we've been trying to talk about as well, which is the personal maturity of that individual ball python. Because uh, you can see the other three, right, Sunny, uh, Link, and also Stitch, they all had that personal maturity that they were ready to go. They had that sperm plugs already developed. They're looking and searching for the female ball pythons. They want to pair up. They want to start initiating their breeding season. Uh, this guy over here has been a little slow and he is actually the same exact age to the month of Stitch. All right, so Stitch is one year old, right? Born in 2020 and Merlin is the same. He's actually one year old, born in 2020. Now, weight wise and condition wise, they are pretty close. Merlin's a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and put him on the scale now for reference. Weighing in at 645 grams. So again, not 900 like Stitch. So you can see he's a little bit slower on the growth, but still, uh, still checks off that weight, uh, kind of like minimum weight for the males to start breeding. Condition-wise, he looks great. It's all nice and strong, good lean muscle not skinny or fat, he's, uh, he's pretty active, he's looking awesome, he's, he's doing great, but he has not yet paired with any of the ladies that he's been bred to. So again, he's just a little bit slower or behind when it comes to just being ready to start locking and pairing with the females. But still pretty early in the season, and again, knowing that he's over a year old, he's got the weight and condition, you know, I'm going to keep using him and pairing him up, but if he, does, if he decides that he's just not ready to start locking up and breeding, then that's all right. We'll give him some time off and we'll see if he kicks it off next year. Right? Sometimes it'll take a little bit longer to figure things out and reach that personal maturity level for themselves. Uh, and that's okay. You just got to kind of keep trying, be patient with them. When they're ready, they'll figure it out and they'll, and they'll go do their work. All right. So Merlin, once again, Enchi, 100% head clown, ultra male pied, awesome animal, looking awesome. I'm really hoping that he does um, work his magic this year. Right? He's only going to two females, part of the plan, so it's not, it's not a huge thing. So he's got some time to figure things out.
but I do have a backup now just in case he decides to take another year off to figure things out. All right, so quick recap for the males. For age, you want them to be at least one year old, so you're giving them that time and opportunity for them to grow to be the right you know, size and body condition, but also even more importantly, to have that personal maturity level reached so that they're growing the sperm plugs, so they're, they're getting that you know, internal clock saying, hey, I need to go out there and start searching for the females and start pairing and start their own initial breeding cycle, right? Uh, so that's definitely important for, the, for weight or body condition and size. Uh, anywhere from about 600 grams to about 800 grams is our sweet spot. Again, there's breeders out there that go a lot sooner than that, around 400, 500 grams. And there's breeders that prefer to wait closer to the 800 to 1,000 gram. But definitely if you play around like 600, 800 grams, I think that's a good, uh, I think that's a good kind of happy medium for weight. And body condition, of course, you don't want them to be too heavy or too skinny, right? Don't overfeed them. Try to get them to grow too fast. Right? You definitely don't need as much food as the females and they're going to do just fine as long as they're staying active, they're building good muscle, uh, muscle condition and body mass. It's definitely going to be what you're looking for. Um, and when it comes to the personal maturity, again, you're looking for them to develop those sperm plugs. A lot of times you'll see their actions, right? their behaviors inside their tubs or their enclosures. They're going to be hanging around the cold spot a lot more, cooling off. Also, as soon as you open up that tub, they're going to poke their head out and start searching as if they were hungry, but they're not really trying to eat. Uh, that tells me that, hey, they're looking for uh, the females that are laying off those sink glands, right? Because we'll get into that soon, but the females will put out these distinct smells and stuff like that, that tells the males, hey, I'm over here, I'm ready to breed, come find me, right? So they're, they're out there, they're looking, they're searching, they're trying to be active, trying to get to their females to start breeding, All right? So that's kind of a, just a quick rundown on the males. Let's go check out the females. All right, jumping into the ladies now. So first up, we have Bambi. She is our beautiful bamboo, possible het VPI, exantic girl. Uh, she's the one that laid our very first clutch here at Embers Ball Pythons and gave us that beautiful, beautiful clutch of bamboos and some even world first KRG bamboos, which was awesome. Uh, but she's just a beautiful example of bamboo. Last year was her first season. She was a first time mama, so now she's proven. And she's done awesome in building back up her, her body weight and her conditioning is just ready to roll for round two, which is super exciting. But I'll give you a little bit of background, again, looking at age, weight, body condition, and also personal maturity, we're gonna talk about some examples here. So for Bambi, she was born in 2018. So right now she's three years old, but again, when she started breeding for us, she was only two, right? So she reached about two years old. So that's kind of like the magic number that you would hear recommended a lot with breeders is looking at at least two to three years old before you start to pair your females. Now again, that also depends on the individual ball pythons personal maturity. So if you go keep going back to that number three point of personal maturity because it really is up to them, right? It's not something that we can do. It's not a magic equation or number. Think about it in the wild, you know, in Africa and wherever they're, they're naturally uh, doing their thing out there. They're not really figuring, they're not really thinking about, okay, how old are you? Let me check your license and ID, making sure that you're of age, right? They're just looking at their own personal maturity levels and how they feel and what they want to do, right? And they're working off of their instinctual kind of natural qualities to start breeding and pairing in the wild. So uh, if you think about it that way, right, it's not, again, the magic number. It's just going back to research and experience and what people have done and shown to be kind of working best for them. So personal maturity, I think, is the key element. But if you're looking at kind of like history and stuff, and again, looking at what other breeders have been successful with, it, you're, it's kind of safe to say around that two-year mark to three-year mark is when they're reaching that personal maturity, building follicles, wanting to develop and start pairing so that they can lay their clutches. Uh, so she is a beautiful bamboo ball python and she was again about two years old when she started breeding and laid her first clutch for us. And right after she laid her clutch, she started eating for us again, building that weight and condition level back to you know A plus so that she can start doing it all over again for us this season. Uh, as you can tell she's got really good body mass, good structure, she's not flat anymore. Um, or concave from laying her last clutch. She's got a nice girth around her, her midsection so that it has enough space and plenty of fat preserves for that 
for that eggs and the follicles to start developing in there and so that she can have a healthy clutch. So that's kind of the idea behind her weight and condition. Um, so let's go ahead and get a weight on her. So we'll kind of get a reference and we'll talk about that. All right, let's see. We got, all right, so the harder part about these bigger girls is getting them in here. 2,200 grams. All right, so 2,215, about 2,200 grams. All right, sweet girl. All right, so big Bambi over here, she's about 2,200 grams. Uh, she's looking great, she's healthy. I know that when she laid her last clutch, she was uh, definitely a lot less than that. She was probably closer to 1,700, 1,800 grams. Uh, so she's picked up her weight and she's doing amazing. She's ready to go for us again this season. So excited about that. All right, so the kind of the key point there when it comes to that second element, the weight and body condition for females is the recommended weight of at least 1,500 grams, uh, more or less, right? That's when they're gonna start to reach that good condition so that they can have enough space in their bodies and fat preserves in their system to lay a healthy clutch, right? To develop those follicles, to develop those eggs, and lay that clutch for you guys. Um, so 1,500 grams, again, it's not an exact number or science, it's just, that's kind of like a good reference mark. If you start too early, around you know, 1,100, 1,200 grams, right? there's a good chance if you start pairing there that they're gonna want to develop that instinct of wanting to eat more so that they can reserve more in their system, and by the time they're starting to lay or you know, actually develop those follicles, they'll be closer to that 1,500 gram mark. That's another way to look at it as well. All right, guys, next up in our female example is Lily. She's a leopard spot nose, 100% head ultra milk girl who is deep in blue. So I'm not gonna I'll try not to bother her too much, but I definitely wanted to show you guys Lily because she is a 2019 baby, meaning she was not ready to go for us last year, last season, but she should be ready to go this season in her premier you know, breeding season. So. Uh, she is a beautiful leopard spot nose head ultra milk girl. We're super excited to start you know, pairing her. She's had a few locks already with our boy Stitch. If you guys remember, that's the clown pinstripe head ultra milk male. So it's going to be an awesome clutch for us. But she is looking amazing. She has extremely well body mass and condition. She has been eating really well for us, trying to build up that, those fat preserves in her system. And she is doing really well for herself. Uh, she's one of the girls that, when it comes to personal maturity, is giving us a lot of the signs. And what are the signs for that? You're basically looking at, you know, obviously the development of follicles in the system. Uh, if I had an ultrasound, obviously if you have an ultrasound, you can go ahead and check and measure those follicles and kind of track down and document the growth. But since I don't have an ultrasound yet, it's on the list, um, I basically look for other indicators. So you'll see that they start cooling themselves off a lot because they're trying to cool off their body from doing all that work. They'll start wrapping around the bowls and the cool side of your tubs and enclosures. Uh, if you start to palpate through, every time I try to put them back, I try to palpate their midsection, uh, which maybe I'll do a video on that further down the line. And I'll try to feel the lumps, right, for every follicle that's in our system and kind of track how, if it gets easier and easier to feel them as they're growing, it just shows that those follicles are getting bigger and developing and becoming closer and closer to that time. Um, but she is definitely a big girl now. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a weight. If I can, not bothering her too much. All right, sweet girl, let's get in here. All right, mama. All right, she is 2,371 grams. Whoop. All right, sweet girl. All right, so she's at 2,371 grams. And again, she's only two years old now. So she's at that perfect kind of stage in her life that she wants to start breeding. She's got the personal maturity checked off. She's growing follicles. Uh, another, another sign or indicator you'll start to see in their enclosures is actually the marks of scenting, right? They'll start throwing off some different scents with scenting glands and it's almost like they're releasing these fluids or blood marks inside of their tubs and they're kind of painting it across their, their walls of their enclosures and on their tubs and leaving out different scents, attracting some of the male ball pythons to come in and start joining her in the breeding season process, right? So I can see that in her tubs and her enclosures 
and she's definitely looking, showing me all the indicators that she wants to start her season, she wants to start breeding. Uh, so once again, excellent body condition, way over the uh, 1500 gram mark. So that should be awesome. Hopefully she gives us a pretty large and healthy clutch this season. All right, so next up on our list, guys, is Classy. She's our classic, normal, wild-type ball python. She's a beautiful girl. We purchased her last year as a proven breeder, but uh, I guess the owners or prior owners, they had you know, got a clutch from her, and that's kind of the time frame. As soon as they laid the clutch, I, I was able to buy her and got her into our collection. So I was kind of surprised on how small she was, Again, because I was expecting a proven breeder to be larger. But as I learned and researched and, and kind of understood the process a little better, again, I realized that it doesn't take much. They can be around the 1200 to 1500 gram mark and still give you a good, healthy clutch. And that's kind of what he had in his experience with this girl. She came to us close to around 1200, 1400 grams, I believe. And she's making her way back to, you know, obviously 1500 gram plus. Uh, so she's looking really good because she came to us a little smaller uh, the time I got her. I did not breed her last season. I gave her the year off to give her some time to kind of recuperate some of that body weight and condition. And this year she's showing me all the signs that she wants to try again. She wants to go for it, right? So again, I'm looking at her behavior, looking at the signs of what she's trying to tell me. And then I'm kind of working off of that. All right, so let's look at her weight. All right, 1675. Come here, sweet girl. All right, so she's weighing 1675, 1,675 grams. So again, she surpassed that 1,500 gram mark, and uh, she is on her way to 1,700, 1,800 grams, which is awesome. It's kind of where I want her to be before she starts really getting into the season. Uh, but her body condition is great. She's been really, uh, she's been really eating well. I, I can tell she wants to have those fat preserves. She wants to have that body mass and condition ready to go for her eggs. All right, guys, the last girl I want to bring out for our example is Raya. She is our beautiful pastel lesser double head ultra male clown girl. And this girl has got me all confused because she is just doing so amazing in her growth and personal maturity. Uh, for her age, it's got me a little bit kind of like, what's going on here, right? Confused, but also excited because I know she's going to do awesome when she is ready, when her time comes. So to give you the example of her age, she is uh, born 2020. So she was just born last year. She's only a year old. I think she's about 14 months, 13 or 14 months old now. Uh, but she's well over a thousand grams and she's just not slowing down. I mean, I'm not trying to overfeed her or giving her anything extra. She just decided on her own that she's gonna eat well, she's gonna grow well, she wants to speed up that process and start that personal maturity uh, you know, clock for herself. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh her, get an idea of where she's at. All right, so she's at 1175, so just shy of 1200 grams. And again, she's only about a year old, about 13 months old. So, I mean, that's pretty awesome. Again, normally, you know, I start reaching that 1200, 1300 gram mark, and it's usually a good indicator that they're reaching that personal maturity uh, level for them to start breeding. But because she's only one year old, I'm not gonna start pairing her. I'm gonna let her kind of speak to me and tell me when she's ready to go. I'm gonna look for all the key indicators just like the other girls are showing me of her growing follicles, maybe cooling off more, wrapping around the bowl, um, you know, leaving those scent indicators, wanting to you know, attract the males to her, her tub. All those are gonna be indicators that I'm looking for, right? And especially when I get my ultrasound, I'll be able to actually measure out any follicle growth development inside of her system. Uh, but for now, I'm going to let her do her thing. I'm going to let her continue to grow at her pace. And I'm super excited to see uh, how soon she'll be ready to go because I can't wait to get her plugged into our Ultra Milk Clown project and see her beautiful babies. All right, once again, she's Pastel Lesser, double head Ultra Milk Clown, just looking absolutely amazing. Can't wait. Hi, nice sweet girl.
All right, so quick recap on the female ball pythons. Right, when it comes to age, you definitely want to wait around that two to three year mark is kind of like the magic number that is usually recommended so that they have the time and opportunity for them to grow to the appropriate size and weight and body condition and of course that personal maturity level. Uh, when it comes to the weight and body condition, you're looking at around that 1500 gram mark is kind of like the magic number that they're, they seem to be ready and wanting to start producing you know, follicles and growing to lay their clutches. Uh, so it could be a little bit more or less than that, right? 1200, 1300 grams. You can kind of kick them off and start pairing if they're eating well and they're looking good. And of course, if you give it a little bit more time, they're closer to 2000 grams or more, then that's just fine as well. They have more body mass, more conditioning so that they're giving you better, healthier eggs or more production in eggs. So that's kind of the idea there. And of course, it all falls back to personal maturity, right? So the females are going to start showing you signs of when they're ready, whether it's their, their growing follicles. And if, while they're growing those follicles, they're trying to cool off, wrap around the water bowls. They're laying on their backs a little bit because they're feeling uncomfortable. The larger those follicles get, right, they're going to start showing more and more of those signs. Uh, they're going to want to start eating really, really well, right? They're always going to be looking like they're hungry because they're trying to, their, their internal instincts are telling them we have to eat so that we can have that preserve in our system so that when we start going off of food because we're holding on to these eggs, um, then we're going to have plenty in our system as reserves to get us through that season, right? And that's kind of the idea. Their internal clock is saying you have to eat so that you're ready to roll for the time that you're off food. You're going to stay healthy and strong. Uh, for your clutch. Uh, so we're looking for all those signs. Uh, also the scenting, right? The different scent gland markings inside the tub or enclosure. All of these indicators are good signs that they are ready to initiate their season and start breeding for you. All right, guys. So once again, thank you so much for watching and tuning in. Breeding maturity. Hopefully you learned something or got something out of it. I know we've been learning so much from the community and from other breeders and from our own experience last season. And we're, we're so thirsty and hungry to learn more. So again, I know we're in this together and our goal is really to help you guys take your ball python knowledge, care and experience to that next level. And so hopefully this helped. Uh, if it did, please comment below. Let us know. We appreciate you guys. And until next time, be safe, be blessed, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.